Hello friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography. Today we are continuing our conversation with the Mint camera, the TL70, and I'm really excited to be able to go ahead and bring you the much anticipated Roll 1. Of course, you know I'm calling these cartridges Rolls because of the humorous, the kind of tongue-in-cheek idea. Also, pro tip, save your cartridge because you can do this with it. Haha! <laughs> you can put your images in here. And this is the cartridge, these are the images that I learned the most about the TL70 with. And let's actually get a look. We're going to go through all 10 of them. I'm going to do this in about five minutes and that'll be a first, right guys? <laughs> okay, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up if it helps you. When we talk about the exposure settings that I was using and what I found out here, don't forget to subscribe and tell Mint Camera. Let them know that you're happy that they shared this camera with me. All you got to do is comment, thanks Mint, down below. I appreciate that and let's get started. This first image right here taught me quite a bit, and what we're going to see that many of the images share this same result. I was watching the light on the Mint camera, which was inside of the actual box that will tell you whether or not the image is exposed properly. And what I found out was that the metering is metering as a whole matrix metering rather than spot metering. So on other cameras that are Instax, they usually do a spot meter like the Mini 90 will spot right at the center. But it seems like this camera is metering the entire scene. And it also seems like it's center, not center weighted, it also seems like it's weighted around a dark area. Now, outside F16, uh, was Sunny 16 should have been what was used. The camera was showing a green light at 5.6. I figured it would be a little, a little overexposed and of course it was. Remember, this is ISO 800 rated film. And so I came to some pretty interesting conclusions, right? I just told you that I thought that the camera was metering as matrix for the entire uh, scene and then waiting towards the shadows. Now, how could I have ever come up with that information? Well, I did it. Notice I write down my EXIF information, if you will, right? I write down what I see. And let's actually use that and look and see if we can actually get, uh, make that conclusion come out. First of all, the sky is always much, much brighter than the rest of the scene. It's much, much brighter. And so, if the camera was metering in order to expose for the shadows, then we would begin to see things like this. We would begin to see the shadow detail being brought out. You see, with film, you want to expose for the shadows. And so, the camera is doing exactly that. Most of the time, we expect the meter in the camera to work as a spot. But if we look right here, we'll see that this eye, it's not a spot meter. It's not inside the camera. See, this also makes sense that it's outside the camera. It's metering the entire scene. And that's important. So, a lot of times, people express uh, frustration with their first few shots or a couple of rolls with the TL70. It has nothing to do with exactly what the camera is doing. It has to do with our expectations. So if we thought that we wanted to get a shot like this, which was excellent, like a point and click, well this was taken as my 40 second shot. And you can see I learned quite a bit of information from here to here. But you notice I wouldn't have been able to get anywhere without this. I started putting my information down, which is pretty standard. Okay, so as we're looking right here, what I want you to notice is once again, when you see a scene that has a brightly lit sky but is also about half lit uh, with a background which is much darker than the sky when you think in terms of uh, exposure values, that's when we see the weight for the actual shadows coming out. So what does this mean? This means when you're outdoors shooting during the daytime with the TL70, you should be closer to F16 for some reason we got a lot of blur, this is on a swing, so the camera chose a slow shutter speed at f16. And the reason it did so was very simply, this is all dark blue down here. This is a background right there that's dark and only a little bit of bright uh, sky right there. And so the camera just chose a slower shutter speed. It also means that if you're overthinking this by trying to out outsmart the shutter, then it's going to be difficult. So here are my takeaways. Go ahead. F16 and F22, outdoors, bright sunlight, go ahead and use the negative exposure compensation. Put it on negative EC right here, put it on F16, and then wiggle it back and forth. Notice right now the 22 is not exactly center, wiggle it a little bit. Once you wiggle it, you're going to make sure that the aperture is actually center of the lens right there, and then it's going to make sense. In fact, there's no film in here. Let's go ahead and show you that real quick. I'm going to show you that real quick. All right, so when we 
push, and I'm going to put it on bulb so I can hold this open. If you look at the lens in there, oh, gotta open the top. If you look at the lens, it's open. Now, as I'm moving this, if you switch your aperture, notice how the heart's not straight on. Well, you got to center it. You know, you got to feel for that little detent in there. Okay, now that was the 10 second look. Our F16 and F22, where is F22? Look at that. If you didn't make sure that F22 was centered, see how it's not centered right here? Look at what F22 does in there. It's way off. You're going to get crazy results. Now we're centered. Notice and look on the front, F22 is centered. So the takeaway to getting to doing two things, takeaway here, I know we're hitting five minutes and 43 seconds, thanks for bearing with me. If you are still watching, just comment with a thumbs up down there. So here's the idea, center your aperture carefully. It says so in the manual also, it says center your aperture carefully. That will avoid vignetting by lining the aperture up with the actual lens itself. Remember this is a rotary aperture system, the apertures are on a Rot rotating plate, and then use that negative exposure compensation. That's going to ensure that you're getting the fastest shutter speed that you can possibly get, probably 1 to 50th to 1 500th of a second. Of course, we don't know that directly, but using negative exposure compensation allows us to make sure that the camera, we're telling it we want it to use a faster shutter speed in this instance. And then by centering your dial, just by wiggling it, you're going to get rid of the vignetting and you're going to have much better results. Now. If you think that was great, roll two, roll three, roll four, and onward were awesome. So my sob story started out as sadness because I wondered what was going on, but it turned out in success because I was able to learn from what I was doing. And this was $10 worth of pictures. So guess what, guys? You don't have to do that. You can learn from my mistakes right now. Apply what I said, negative exposure compensation, and center your aperture nicely. Guys, I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. We've been looking at the first roll, all 10 shots, 1 through 10, of my Mint TL70 first roll cartridge. I've been having a great time with this camera. I hope that you are as well. I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. Thank you to Mint for sending this camera to me as a review. I want to thank you for watching and remind you that I will catch you on the flip side.